Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. We've got a windy day here in New England. It's not much good for shooting off the bench today, uh, but um, I, what I thought I'd do is take a look at this pistol that I just picked up. Uh, this is the Feinwerbau LP80. This is a recoilless match pistol. It was uh, uh, all the rage back in the 80s. This gun was winning Olympic matches and, and uh, all kinds of other matches as well. It's just a, a superbly accurate pistol made by Feinwerbau. Again, this is the LP80. You can see it has the target grip on it, which has the adjustable shelf. It's really kind of nice. It fits the hand like a glove. You can uh, you can adjust this shelf right here on the bottom, up or down, to accommodate for different size hands. Um, this gun I got at a very reasonable price because it has a problem and the problem is the rear sight the windage screw and knob have broken uh, I do have the parts the seller was kind enough to include those with the gun uh, but I'm going to need to find a new windage screw because the screw snapped right in half and uh, that basically means that I have no way to adjust the uh, the windage on the pistol however it seems to be adjusted pretty well because I can hit my little 8 inch disc out there at 25 yards and I'm not much of a pistol shot <laughs> so anyway what I thought we'd do today is take a closer look at this pistol this is a 177 caliber gun it weighs uh, weighs about 2 pounds 12 ounces so it's not a lightweight pistol by any standards but it, it is very comfortable in the hand and it does balance quite well uh, it measures 16 and a half inches overall uh, and as far as the weight goes it was available with interchangeable barrel weights which would connect right at the front of the gun here uh, and they just screw in and you can put them out in front of the gun to create a little more balance for you if, if you prefer that this gun didn't come with those weights so um i can't show you those but uh, it just this is something that i've always wanted in my collection I've, I've been looking at these guns since i was a teenager uh in the beaming catalog the fire about 65 was the uh, the predecessor to this gun i believe and uh, i was drooling over that gun mainly because of the power the gun the gun was uh rated and i think back in those days 550 feet per second i'm sure that was a little bit high with light lightweight pellets but that was still impressive for a pistol in those days in fact today it's still impressive for a spring powered gun uh, what makes this really unique is the fact that it's a recoilless pistol it uses a system of rails and the piston uh, the whole top of the action can slide on the grip frame and it does that when the gun's fired so it cancels out the recoil um, the only real problem that i'm having with this gun is that it's got terrible spring buzz so that nice a motionless feel in your hand is ruined by that vibration that comes through on the uh, on the spring when you fire the gun and you'll probably hear it when we shoot the gun on video uh, it's actually making an audible buzz sound it's kind of annoying <laughs> but anyway uh, this is uh, it's got a couple other features the front sight blade is interchangeable there's different widths of front sight blade for uh, whatever your tastes are when you're doing some shooting it's um, it's just a sweet little gun. It, this, this again, this was produced back in the 80s. They don't make this gun anymore. Um, in fact, they don't make anything even close to this anymore. It's just a wonderful, wonderful gun. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, take it over the uh, trigger pull gauge. We're going to get an idea what the trigger is set at. I'm also going to shoot it over the chronograph and see if it's shooting up to power. Uh, what are we shooting today? We're shooting some cheap pellets because these are the lightest pellets that I have in my inventory right now. These come in at 7.4 grains, and these are... Uh, uh, JSB Excite. These are their economy pellets. Uh, I've never found them to shoot all that well out of any of my guns, but uh, they're cheap and they're lightweight, so I thought it'd be a good pellet to test in this gun to see uh, you know, what kind of velocity it's producing, because when we have it apart, if it's not shooting up the snuff, we'll definitely replace the seals as well. All right, so I'll be right back and we'll do that trigger pull test, and thanks again, folks, for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. Okay, so we're back at the bench. We're going to do a trigger pull test. We'll do three pulls and then we'll take an average on this beautiful Feinwerf uh LP80 recoilless match pistol. Uh, it's a side lever cocking gun, so you release the side lever with a little latch right here, and that'll free it up. And when you pull the side lever back, it's a sliding breech, which will expose the rear of the barrel where you're going to insert a pellet directly into the barrel. So you just pull this back. It's a ratcheting uh, bear trap system. All right, and what I like to do on any sliding breech type gun whether it be a rifle or a pistol is brace that lever so that there's no way that thing can shut on my hand so what i'm doing is putting it behind my elbow i'm holding it up against my chest to load it um, i just i don't trust mechanical devices that's why you'll never catch me on a roller coaster <laughs> uh, the, uh, machines break i mean break all the time so i don't trust machines as a rule all right, so it's a little finicky to load, tough to get your fingers down in there, but we've got one 7.4 grain Excite pellet in there, and we're going to take a, a shot with the 
trigger pull gauge and see what we get. Now this should be a very light pull. Again, this is a match trigger. I haven't touched the adjustments. It's uh, fully adjustable, so you can really lighten it up if you want. But we're going to see where it is right now. I kind of like it. I don't find it to be uh, heavy at all. It's quite comfortable, so I probably will leave it right where it is. All right, so we'll do shot number one right now. It came in at 13.9 ounces, so not quite one pound. We'll do another shot. All right, shot number two. Okay, shot number two. Can you hear that buzz? 15.3 <laughs> ounces, so very close to a pound. All right, these are little wad cutter pellets, which is kind of what this gun was designed to shoot um, for match uh, shooting. They always use a wad cutter. <clears throat> okay, this will be shot number three. And that was 15.3 ounces. So it's pretty consistent, coming in at just under one pound. Uh, what a what a sweet little gun. Um, I really, really like this pistol. I'm, I'm so glad I picked it up. We're going to take it apart. It looks pretty complicated, so that's going to be a pretty involved video, I would think. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be fun. I'm, we're going to enjoy this. So um, when we shoot it at the chronograph, I'll try to remember to show you how the sledge system works, where it slides back and forth um, as, at the shot. So it really doesn't have any recoil whatsoever, but because, again, of that spring vibration, I'm getting an annoying vibration through the pistol, and uh, that kind of ruins that whole effect of having it sit there motionless in your hand. All right, so we're going to do a chronograph test. I'll be right back with that. So stick okay, around. Okay, so we're back at the bench with the Feimer Bow Model LP80 recoilless match pistol. We're about to do a chronograph test. We're going to run it over the chronograph, and we're going to see what it's producing. Let's clear that number out so we don't spoil it for you guys. Alright, we'll let that chronograph do its countdown. I'll zoom you in on the chronograph so you can see. Now I'm sitting a little unusual um, here. I'm going to be holding the gun kind of off center, which means it's hard for me to line it up over the chronograph. So we may have a shot or two that don't register, uh, but I'm trying to give you guys a clear shot so you can see the numbers for yourself. Uh, I, I also believe I've told you that this gun was rated at 550 feet per second from the factory back in the 80s, and that was incorrect. It was rated at about 500 feet per second, but still that was an impressive number for a, a young man of my age looking at a pistol. I mean, it was unheard of. Um, back in those days, I had a BSA Scorpion, which was rated at 600 feet per second, and that was the pistol. But that thing was enormous. It weighed close to four pounds. <laughs> uh, I'm still looking for one of those. I'm going to pick one up one of these days, but uh, for now, we're going to be happy with this Feimer Bow model LP80. Again, side lever cocking. I don't know if you'll be able to see it because you'll be looking at the rear of the pistol, but keep an eye on the back of the gun where the rear sight is. You may actually see how the gun moves when it, when the shot is fired. All right, we'll do shot number one. Hopefully this is lined up for us. 374, that's the lowest number I've seen out of this gun yet. So this thing may need a reseal because it's not as consistent as I was hoping. Um, it's been averaging about, a, mm, I don't know, about 50 feet per second or more better than that. More like um, 60 feet per second. All right, shot number two. Error, see? We're not lined up, so this is going to happen probably a couple times while we try this. Usually, I'm kind of looking over the chronograph with you guys, but... Uh, because it's a pistol, we had to reposition the chronograph a little bit differently. All right, let's try this again. Shot number two. 419. That's about right. I think we're going to rebuild this gun. When we take it apart to fix that spring buzz, we'll reseal it while we're at it. All right, that's going to be a fun video because uh, this is something I've never worked on before. And uh, German engineering is always very foreign to us Americans over here on this side of the pond. Um, they seem to over-engineer everything they build. So I'm expecting uh, a little bit of a complicated job when we take this apart. But watch for that in a future video. It ought to be cool. All right, shot number three. 429. Shot number three was 429. 
Again, uh, Excite 7.4 green pellets. This will be shot number four. 414. 414. Lastly, shot number five. 375, yeah, so it's not very consistent. I think it's gonna need a reseal. We're definitely gonna open it up and fix that uh, that spring buzz. And uh, so anyway, um, I'm not gonna try to hit the 60 yard target with this pistol, um, especially on a really windy day like today. Uh, but we have a uh, an eight inch disc out there that we're gonna shoot at. I gotta fire up the camera that's over my shoulder, so maybe you'll get a look at that. Um, and then we're gonna take a shot. So I'll be right back, let's see. Okay, so we're going to take a few shots at 25 yards. We're going to try to hit the yellow disc that you might be able to see over my shoulder. Uh, when I edit this video, if you can't see the yellow disc, I'll, I'll try to zoom in a little bit for you. But I'm trying to give you a, a view of the table as well. I, have, I had a request by some of you guys that you want to actually see me loading the gun. So we'll, <laughs> so we'll do that today. Uh, again, this is a 25-yard shot. It's a big target, but I need a big target because I'm not good with a pistol at all. <laughs> so, so anyway, it's a windy day. we got lightweight pellets so let's see what we can do um, so take a good look here you'll be able to see over my shoulder at the same time we'll have the camera rolling so you can see from the side and uh, take a, a look as I fire the gun uh, at least at some point and you should be able to see the whole top of the gun uh, slide back and forth as the guns fired and that's what cancels out the recoil it's kind of cool it's definitely worth a look if you can see it happen all right I don't know if you saw it then it just slid to the rear of the gun set itself for the first shot Okay, again a little fumbly to load. Ah, I'm in trouble. Hmm. I'm gonna have this much trouble yet. There we go. These 62 year old fingers, guys. Okay, so 25 yards, we're gonna shoot at that bigger metal disc out there. Let's see how we do. Got a beautiful sight picture. I'm right in the sun with the pistol. There's one shot. I don't know if you saw it. Keep your eye on that uh, sliding mechanism on the top of the pistol. Shot number two. So keep an eye. Watch this gun move. It's really cool. Shot number two. Did you see it? I'll show you again in a second. This will be shot number three. Wow. We're hitting every time. I'm starting to feel confident. <laughs> Again, it's not much of a challenge. It's, it is a good sized disc. At the, it's an eight inch target, folks, at uh, 25 yards. So don't give me too much credit. <laughs> it looks further away in the camera, I'm sure, but it's, it's not that far away. 25 yards. I could throw a rock that far. <laughs> I probably wouldn't hit the target though. All right, shot number, what is this, four? Shot number four. Wow, nice. I don't know if you can hear it ring that bell, but it's ringing it pretty nice. It doesn't ring like the big one, but you know what? I told you we weren't gonna shoot at that big target, but let's do it just for fun. Let's see if we can hit that sucker out there at 60 yards. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see the big target. It's a little to the left next to that big green backstop. We can give ourselves a little bit of hold over. Oh, I hit a little left. I heard it hit the backstop. <laughs> Let me try this. This is kind of funny. If we do hit it, you may not even hear it. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, folks, but I actually made contact. 60 yards. It just made a little, tiniest little thing. <laughs> you probably wouldn't pick it up with the uh, with the microphone, but I'm impressed. That was pretty funny. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can hit it again. Again, keep your eye on the pistol. It's pretty cool to watch that if you haven't seen it yet. Now it's very windy. We're going to wait for that wind to stop. 
God only knows how far it can push a 7.4 green pellet off course at 60 yards. All right, shot number three. It's on the 60-yard target. Nope, hit a little left again. Okay, shot number four at the 60-yard target. It's tough. <laughs> I have no idea how much holdover to use. <laughs> we'll try one more shot. Shot number five. Whoops. And uh, we'll see if we can't hit that thing. I'd like to get it to ring a little bit louder so you guys can actually hear it. All right. One more try. 60 yards. Shot number six, five. All right, it was worth a try. We did hit it one one time out of five. <laughs> All right, folks, so that's the Flymore Bow Model LP80 air pistol. It's not the prettiest example, but I've always wanted one, and it fits the bill for me. It's a, it's a gun that I've always wanted to add to my collection, so here it is. So anyway, uh, I want to thank you folks for stopping by the Peloton Pistons Air Gun channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Hit the bell to be reminded of future videos, and by all means, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day. Alright, so uh, first thing we're going to do is put it over the chrono, I mean the trigger pull test, and I'll be right back with that. So thanks again, folks, for stopping by the piston. <laughs> Jesus, I'm doing so good, too.